Hey church, Ephesians 1, one of the most glorious chapters in all of scripture. And as I think about us, our church, coronavirus, social distancing, everything that we're feeling, well, I think that Ephesians 1 speaks uh, in significant ways to what we're experiencing. So there's five things in particular that I want to draw out. The first being what Paul says to the church, this bold statement in verse 3 that God has blessed us in Christ with not some, not most, but every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. There is nothing more that God can give us as his people than what he has given. And how do we know? Well, because he has given us Jesus. And Paul starts talking about uh, the love that God has shown us in Christ, choosing us in Christ before the foundations of the world, and in love predestining us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. So his pouring out of every spiritual blessing is connected to his love, and his love does not depend on anything that you've done. It doesn't depend on anything that you will do. It simply depends on his free choice. He loves you because he loves you. And that's not just by his choice before the foundations of the world, but it is secured in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. As surely as Jesus lives, as surely as he is God, as surely as he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, that is how certain God's love is for you. And so those two things need to be the bedrock, the foundation that we just sink our roots deeper and deeper into, given all of the uncertainty that faces us in the future, knowing that we have every spiritual blessing, everything that we could possibly be given by God has been given to us in Christ, and that he loves us with a love that is deeper, higher, wider, greater than any love that you could ever imagine, and that it is unshakable, fixed eternally in Jesus himself. From there, Paul goes on to this incredible prayer for the church at Ephesus, and there's three things here that I think are especially relevant to us. Paul prays that the church would be given the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus. And as we're facing this unprecedented time in our history, a time that is going to make uh, history textbooks, well, none of us know exactly what it looks like for God's uh, will to be done on earth as it is in heaven in the midst of coronavirus which means we need to seek wisdom. We need understanding that comes from above. And seeking out that wisdom, well, that comes from making space to commune with the Lord, making space to look to him in his word, making space to ask the spirit to illuminate what is good and right and pleasing in his sight. And one of the strange uh, benefits, blessings of the coronavirus and social distancing is, is that as many of us are cooped up at home, we actually have more time for solitude, more time to be in God's word than perhaps ever before in your life. And so make the most of it, church. Don't waste this opportunity to really press in and ask the, ask the Lord to impart wisdom to you. Then Paul prays, that the church would know the riches of God's glorious inheritance in the saints. Man, how much we feel that as the stock market has plunged, as there's uncertainty with a lot of unemployment and businesses uh, closing for the foreseeable future with uh, just so many unknowns related to finances. I think of the songs that we sing then of, um, you know, be thou my vision, that great line, riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise, thou mine inheritance, now and always. Or the prayer that we pray in Jesus is better, more than all riches, Jesus is better, make my heart believe. Well, now is the opportunity for us to put our money where our mouth is, to ask the Lord to search us and to expose any ways that we have uh, made idols of worldly riches and, and then to, to really 
place our faith again in the immeasurable, uh, or the, the immeasurable riches of God's glorious inheritance, to know that we have an inheritance that awaits us that can never be stripped away, that is untouchable from uh, all of the effects of what's happening on, on earth. And then finally, Paul prays that the church would know the immeasurable greatness of God's power towards us who believe, according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. I think more than anything right now, that's what we need to press into, the immeasurable greatness of God's power. Remembering, knowing, being assured of deep down in our bones that Jesus has conquered sin, he has defeated death. And if those two things are true, well then, what threat does the coronavirus pose to him? What threat does financial crisis pose to him? What threat does the future hold for him? Well, nothing. Nothing at all. Because he has already conquered sin and death. Because he is the sovereign ruler of all. And because we are in Christ, well, in an ultimate sense, coronavirus, financial uh, questions, future, they pose no ultimate threat to us either. As the chapter closes, we see that Jesus reigns and rules far above all other rule, authority, power, dominion, that all things are subjected under his feet. We know the one who is sovereignly in control of everything that is going on. We know him and we know that he's given us every spiritual blessing, that he loves us with eternal love, that he is going to impart to us wisdom, that he has promised us an inheritance that is secure, untouchable from a coronavirus, from the markets, and that he can deliver us from death and from sin. So let's press into those promises. Let's draw near to this God. And as we do, Man, church, what an opportunity we have to share this hope that we have found, to be able to share with our neighbors who are afraid, who are feeling similar kinds of uncertainties that, you know what, we know the one who sovereignly holds all of these things, and we know that he is good. We know that he is love. May we find that coronavirus is not actually a setback to our lives, but it's actually a set up, unlike any we have seen, uh, for gospel advance, for the realization of God's kingdom, for the exaltation of Jesus' name as the only name by which men can be saved. So church, we have an amazing opportunity before us. Let's not waste it. Amen.